we present the case of a 31-year-old woman with gestational hypertension who presented to our unit five days after an uncomplicated caesarean section at term. On examination, her blood pressure was 193 over 102 and she appeared lethargic with hyperreflexia and bilateral cronus. Tests showed proteinuria, hemolytic anemia, transaminitis and a raised serum creatinine consistent with preeclampsia of postpartum onset, with HELP syndrome and acute kidney injury. However, over the next 24 hours, we noticed that the patient was passing large volumes of clear and dilute urine through the catheter, amounting to 10 litres, despite a total intake of only 3 litres. We proceeded to exclude osmotic diuresis and Sheehan's syndrome. But we noticed that despite massive polyuria, her urine osmolality remained inappropriately low. This made us suspect pure water loss from diabetes insipidus. So we proceeded with a supervised water deprivation test. In our patient, her urine osmolality failed to rise sufficiently, which confirmed the diagnosis of diabetes insipidus. In order to differentiate central from nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, we then administered DDAVP, which caused urine osmolality to increase by 13%. Notably, our patient's urine output became normal when her transaminitis resolved. So taking all the features into consideration, we diagnosed partial central diabetes insipidus due to liver dysfunction from HELP syndrome. In pregnancy, diabetes insipidus can occur when the breakdown of antidiuretic hormone by placenta vasopressinase is enhanced whenever liver metabolism is reduced, like in patients with HELP syndrome. If the diagnosis of gestational diabetes insipidus is missed in women with HELP syndrome, then there will be a high risk of severe hypernatremia because we usually restrict fluids in patients with preeclampsia. These women will also be at risk of seizures despite magnesium sulfate prophylaxis because the drug becomes rapidly aspirated in the urine. 